Welcome to this short video. I'm just going to walk through in the next few minutes, uh, next series of few videos, how to go about creating your constraint diagram just based on the example that we showed in class uh, last week. So to start, I think it's best if we just explain what's going on with all these parameters that I have here um, and how they're used. So uh, for atmospheric modeling, which we'll do first in this video, we need some of the base parameters. So I've just put in here our standard density, standard temperature at sea level, and standard pressure at sea level. And these are all in uh, British units. From these values, you can calculate the gas constant just using ideal gas law. Pressure divided by density times temperature gives you your ideal gas constant. We'll use that in our calculation of the speed of sound at different altitudes. Our lapse rate comes from um, the essentially the slope of the temperature uh, change for the troposphere. And then here I just have some example calculations for density at various altitudes uh, and various temperatures. So I've included the variables in here because these are green, so they're calculations. Um, and we're applying our uh, equation from the notes from the textbook that's accounting for the variation from uh, our standard temperature day. So for example, if I open up this formula, um, it's just following this equation, 1.233 times our temperature ratio, which is calculated as 1 minus the lapse rate times um, the altitude, the elevation to the power of 5.2561, all divided by the standard temperature times our temperature ratio again, plus uh, our temperature deviation. So if you use that equation, you can calculate the density for any temperature um, your temperature deviation on ground level is the same as at altitude, so that delta T ISA. Um, so plus 30 degrees, remember this is in Fahrenheit, um, for delta T or Rankine, the same, same delta parameter. So uh, standard day is 59 degrees or 518 Rankine, uh, so that's about a 90, 89 degree Fahrenheit day. Uh, not too hot, but uh, warmer than usual. <coughs> Next we have our requirements. So these will come in when we actually do our constraint analysis later on, so they won't come into the atmospheric modeling, but we have our stall speed. Um, I'll explain this later and how I calculate the stall speed with flaps. We have our takeoff distance, total takeoff distance over a 50-foot obstacle, our ground run distance, which I calculate from the total takeoff distance, friction uh, during takeoff, takeoff parameter from a plot, which I'll show again how we calculate later, rate of climb in uh, feet per minute, Angle of climb, um, this you'd have to input based on the regulation for which segment of uh, takeoff you're looking at. Mm -hmm. For constraint analysis, this isn't too important, um, but when we're doing our performance analysis, uh, it'd be a little more critical. Cruise speed, um, I have to calculate that based on the atmospheric modeling, so that's not in there yet. Cruise altitude, again, we can get this from our atmospheric modeling landing distance and landing friction coefficient. And then lastly, these are all your aircraft parameters. So these are the design uh, points that you can modify and change just based on your design. Um, so we'll get into this in the next video. So first off, let's start with atmospheric modeling. I'm gonna do that over here. Um, so if we keep things on track in our minds, I find it easiest if we include sort of our tables um, and images, pictures, screenshots, or whatever that's going to uh, help us with our formulas. And remember and keep things all uh, square in our minds. So let's basically plot out the altitude, the temperature ratio, temperature uh, density ratio, and the density from sea level all the way up to our cruise altitude 65,000 feet and we're going to use these relationships for all these. So I'm going to make the first column altitude and then temperature so that's theta uh, our actual temperature in Rankin and our temperature let's convert it to Fahrenheit. I like to compare it to a temperature that I'm used to so I can make sure that the numbers are reasonable. We have our temperature ratio and finally we have our density. 
So we have all these parameters. I'm just going to fill out altitude. So sea level is zero. I'm going to go in 2,500 foot increments. You can choose any increment you want. Once you start counting, Excel is pretty smart. You just drag this down and automatically continues and I can drag it down to the altitude I want, 65,000 feet. All right, so the next thing I want is our temperature ratio. So temperature ratio, if we look over here, one minus our lapse rate, uh, 6.8756 times 10 to the minus five or six uh, times our altitude. So our temperature ratio is equal to one minus, I'm gonna move over here. I have our lapse rate parameterized, so I can just click on this times our altitude in feet. I should put the units there. And that gives us our temperature ratio. And this is valid all the way until uh, 36,089 feet. So I'm gonna add a dollar sign here to make sure that it continues to use the same lapse rate value. It doesn't change. And I'm gonna drag this down. 3750 is uh, invalid, so I'm just going to manually change this value to 36,089 feet. And I get the temperature ratio at the top of the troposphere. And if we look, it matches the value uh, at any um, location above that. So I'm just going to have the next column just equal the same temperature ratio as above. And I'm going to double click here, and that will auto complete. The rest of those columns. So we have the temperature ratio uh, at any altitude. So for calculating the temperature, you just take the temperature ratio and multiply it by the standard temperature. So I'm going to take equals this value and multiply by our standard temperature, which we already have in our table over here, 518.67. And again, I'll just put a dollar sign here so it always multiplies by that 518. And we can see our temperature variation um, up to 65,000 feet. Now to convert this to Fahrenheit, we have to subtract 459.67. So I'll take this value minus, what was the value I said, 459.67. And we have 59 degrees. Let's add some decimals here. And we can see the temperature variation, so uh, nearly negative 70 degrees in the lower stratosphere, a constant temperature, which makes sense. Um, these are reasonable temperatures we're looking at. Uh, next, we want to find our uh, density ratio. So our density ratio is easily calculated as a function of the temperature ratio over here. So we can say our density ratio is just equal to theta to the power of uh, what's power? 42561. 4.2561. Copy this down. And then finally, our density is equal to our density ratio times our standard density. And we'll copy this down. Oh, forgot to add the dollar sign. Good, so these are again only valid up until this point. So to make sure I don't forget, I'm gonna add an underline here. I'm gonna bold these values. So at this point, we have to change our equation for our density and we have to use the equation over here. So our density ratio is now gonna change. Instead of being this function, is going to be 0 0.297076, which is the density ratio from the point above I'll just hard type this in, 0 0.297076 times the exponent. And I'm going to rearrange that negative, so I'm going to write 36,089, oops, 36,089 minus our altitude times, or sorry, divided by 20,806. And this all should be in brackets. because it's all raised to the exponent. And if we do this, we should get a density ratio good. So our density ratio continues to decrease 
Uh, it's just a function of our altitude. All of our other parameters we've just hard-coded in. So now we change our density ratio over here, and our actual air density uh, just updates automatically. So we can see our conditions now at altitude at 65,000 feet and our cruise conditions. And I'm going to bold that as well. So I'm just going to write here, this is our cruise. I'll put this here as our troposphere. And here, stratosphere. Just so I can remember later on. Good. So we have our atmospheric model. We can plot this just to make sure it makes sense. Um, so you can go ahead and do that. Just plot altitude. You can plot temperature. You can plot your density. Um, before I do that, I want to also calculate our speed of sound. So I'm going to do another table over here. Just label it speed of sound. So below that, I'm going to use um, calculate our speed of sound, and the calculation is going to end up with the value in feet per second. I want to convert that to not true airspeed because that's the uh, terms that we're dealing with most of the time. And then I'm also going to calculate what the uh, true airspeed is for a Mach 0.5. So Mach 0 0.5 and not true airspeed. <coughs> so our speed of sound equation, speed of sound is air, is equal to the square root of our uh, ratio of specific heats. So for air, that's 1.4 times um, the gas constant times the air temperature. So I'm just going to say equals the square root of 1.4 times our gas constant, which we calculated over here, times our air temperature, which is in our table over here. So the speed of sound at sea level, um, I just make sure that this is dollar sign, so it always uses the same gas constant value. That number doesn't change. We have 1,116 feet per second, so that's the speed of sound. And if we auto-complete this, no, it's not beside a number. I'm going to actually drag it. We get the speed of sound essentially is constant once we enter the troposphere because the temperature isn't changing, so that makes sense. Uh, 967 feet per second. Now, to get knots true airspeed, we just take this value and we divide it by 1.688. So we get 661 knots is the speed of sound at sea level, 573 in the stratosphere. And our Mach 0.5 is just half of this, so 0 0.5 times the speed of sound oops, equals 0 0.5 times the speed of sound. And we get Mach 0.5 versus our altitude. So again, I'll just bold and underline these sections because they correspond to um, our points that we care about. And I'm just going to move this over so it's all nice and close. Bold the titles. And we'll add some title here, atmospheric model. Good. So if we want to create a plot, I can just plot altitude versus temperature. I'm just holding the control or command uh, button. Um, let's plot density. And let's plot speed of sound, let's plot it not to true airspeed. So I'm going to go to, uh, what do I go to, chart or insert, I'm just going to make a scatter plot, have some smooth lines, and we get a scatter plot of this information. So we can see our model, our first column is our x-axis. Now this doesn't show up, our density, it's a different order of magnitude, so I'm going to put our density on a second axis. If I double click on this, um, I can put it on a secondary axis. So we can see our density now, and our density axis shows up on the right. So we can make a title here. We have temperature in Rankin um, speed of sound, not true airspeed and density versus altitude. So we have our atmospheric model. This matches what we 
are expecting to see, so I feel confident now that our model is correct. So once we have this, we can input our parameters for cruise, Mach 0.5, our cruise condition, um, into our table. So we had our cruise condition over here, vCruise. Now that automatically updates. Seems I put it in the right cell. Um, and then our density at cruise. That's nice how that copied over. I put it in the right cell. Um, not quite. I'm going to move it down one. So maybe I'm going to do the same thing for cruise should be 30. 286.67. So our cruise speed, 286.67 knots. Funny enough, because the temperature is not changing, speed of sound isn't changing. Um, so we're good. So in our next video, I'll go through um, actually starting to create our constraint analysis and how we actually get plots of our wing loading and our thrust weight ratio.